today's the day. I've put this off for far too long. What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft. If this is your first time here, my name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey trying to learn and develop bushcraft skills. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna do something that I have said I'm gonna do loads of times and have kept putting off. Uh, it's almost kind of like a rite of passage for a bushcrafter. Today, I'm gonna attempt the bow drill. Can you guys hear that? There are three parakeets in, um, in a tree just over the river there. Uh, and a, a bird of prey just flew. I don't know if it was a hawk or a buzzard or something, but it completely freaked out the, uh, the parakeets who started going mental and flying around and shouting to get rid of it. Oh, that's quite funny. Anyway, um, so for anybody that's new to the channel or just doesn't know, um, I recently embarked on a bushcraft instructors course with the guys from Wild Bushcraft Company who I'll leave a link to in the description um, below if you're interested. The day was absolutely brilliant. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. But I have my assessment coming up um, <laughs> in the week. And one of the things that I need to be able to prove that I can do is um, at the very least get smoke using the bow drill method. So that's why we're out today. We're gonna practice um, <laughs> and see if we can do it. Because the only other times that I have done it is I've used um, a pre-made uh, bow drill set. Um, and obviously I can't do that. For the assessment, I have to make my own, so I've got bits of wood and stuff in my bag. Uh, so I'm gonna make the bow drill uh, set uh, and have a go. So just very quickly, for anybody that doesn't know or isn't familiar with the bow drill, um, they sent me some really good, oh, bum's getting wet. They sent me some really cool information about it that I just wanna share with you, just uh, just in case. So it's a fire by friction method, uh, and fire by friction is the process of creating an ember by rubbing wood together. So it works by the usual three elements of fire, so heat, fuel, and oxygen, as I'm sure you guys know. Um, by rubbing one stick uh, onto another stick, in this case the, sp uh, the spindle will rub onto the half. I'll go through the different bits of the bow drill in a minute. Uh, by rubbing uh, the spindle onto another stick, the half uh, of the same or similar hardness under pressure, the point of contact becomes very hot and small fragments of wood are forced off the surfaces and into a notch made in the half. With me so far? Um, this dust, due to it being so small and hot, turns to charcoal, which has a lower ignition point than normal wood. Uh, when enough of this material has built up and the ignition temperature of the material has been reached, oxygen from the atmosphere reacts to cause combustion and creates the ember. That ember can then be turned into flame through slowly increasing those elements as in fuel, oxygen and heat. Um, the embers you can put into a, a tinder bundle, for example, and, and blow into life. I hope that makes sense. So that's just a very quick little bit on kind of what a bow drill is. Um, there are various different parts to it, um, which I will show you very quickly. Uh, the first of which you... Um, may guess is the bow itself so the bow um, the reason for the bow the bow is essentially a slightly curved or straight piece of um, strong wood in this case I've got two I've, I've sourced two from the uh, area of woods near me just to try two different methods as you can see this one is, has a lot uh, more of a curve in it than this one so I just thought we'd try um, but the idea is you put a piece of paracord uh, from one end of the bow uh, to the other and what that actually does is enable you to turn the spindle that's connected to the hearth a lot faster so it makes the entire process easier so so that's the bow so the bow bit of wood with um, a piece of paracord from one end to the other which I'll do in a minute um, some other pieces that we need are a hearth so the hearth is the bit that goes on the ground uh, and is the bit where the um, most of the dust actually comes from so I have because the lovely guys at Wild Bushcraft Company gave me some wood to use I've created a number of hearths um, all made from lime wood. Lime is apparently a really good um, wood to use to make the bow drill, um, particularly for beginners, so I'm very grateful that they've given it to me. Um, the hearth should be about um, half an inch thick, apparently, uh, and should be uh, as smooth as you can get it. So that's what I've got there. So I've got my different half pieces. Um, the spindle, um, I have two bits here. Uh, that I'm going to have to carve a spindle from. Uh, ideally, they need to be about 12, need to be about 12 inches long, uh, which mine aren't. Don't make a joke. <laughs> Excuse me. Need to be about 12 inches long, 
uh, and about thumb thickness as well so I've got some carving to do there so those need to be as round as possible as well and as smooth as possible to aid um, the paracord when it's actually turning the spindle itself so I'll have to do some carving with them uh, the other pieces that you need uh, or the other piece that you need is a bearing block so once I've carved my spindle so the idea is if this is my half half will go on the ground the spindle once it's carved will go into the half uh, bow drill will be here with the paracord around the uh, around the spindle and as I bow the spindle will turn rubbing against the uh, rubbing against the notch that I'm going to make in the half the other thing that I need to get is something called a bearing block which goes on the top of the spindle here because obviously if I just put my hand on the top of the spindle there and try and turn it that's going to do a lot of damage to my hand so I need a bearing block to uh, to ease that and to actually be able to put pressure down um, to get more dust coming out I hope that makes sense that was kind of a rambling explanation of the, of the different parts um, as I make the as I make the, the set properly and as we have a go at it um, I, uh, I hope that you'll uh, you'll see and it'll become a bit more clear. So the first thing I need to do before I go anywhere near the hearth or anything like that is uh, is carve my spindles, get a bearing block, and um, get some paracord for my bow. It's really important, and I need to ensure that my materials, as far as possible, particularly the spindle and the hearth, the bearing block and the bow are, are, are less important. Um, I have to make sure they don't they touch the ground as little as possible if I can not touch the ground at all with the spindle then that's a good thing um, because obviously I don't want them to soak up moisture because that will hinder the process hugely so I'm going to keep everything as far as I can kind of in my bag um, and we'll get to carving um, get to carving a spindle and try this one first so as I'm I don't did I mention it I don't know uh, one end of the spindle the top needs to be uh, tapered to a smaller point where the bearing block will go on to um, to reduce the amount of um, resistance and friction when it's turning the bottom needs to be a bit thicker with um, with a lot less of a point to get as much contact area uh, on as much contact surface as much surface in the contact area what am I trying to say basically I want to I want to make the area that comes into contact with the hearth kind of as, as big as possible um, to get more wood in, in contact with each other um, so this end needs to be a lot less of a point uh, it needs to be round <laughs> or at least uh, cylindrical as far as I can as, as close to perfect as I can get it uh, and as smooth as possible so for that I have brought some sandpaper with me as well because I don't trust my carving skills to get it perfectly perfectly smooth and round um, so yeah so we're just gonna crack on and, and car and car and start carving Okay, so as you can see, hopefully, tapered one end, which is going to have the bearing block on top of it, and this thicker, fatter end is going to go into the hearth itself. I don't know if I've done that particularly well. <laughs> um, I guess we'll find out. So to make my bearing block, all I've done is chop off a section that's about the size of my hand from a, a bigger log that I had at camp. Um, I've split off uh, a small section um, from the side uh, to keep that nice and flat. Um, it's, the reason I've done that is because it's curved so it matches the contours of my hand which will make it easier to hold and apply pressure to. And all I need to do now is in the centre here is carve out, just with my knife, carve out a small notch uh, that the spindle, the tip of the spindle will go into. So. Where's the spindle gone? Put that back in my bag to keep it dry because it started to rain a little bit. So, oops, it's bad. Back on there, you. So, as I say, carve a small notch in my bearing block, which the spindle will then go into. There we go. So, as you can see, it's not massively deep, it's not a huge hole, it's just enough for my spindle to go in and turn. All right, so, got my spindle, got my bearing block, I've put some paracord on my bow. As you can see, literally just tied it, so hopefully that'll work quite nicely. It's probably better to do it that way. Yeah. So now all I need is my path. 
So let's use... We'll try this one. <laughs> okay, so before we get to doing anything else, we have to burn in, it's called burn in the half. Um, so what I need to do is make a small notch where the spindle is going to go. Uh, and then twist the spindle to burn the hole in to get it all ready to go. So, I'll tell you what, let's do it that way around because we've got a bit more room there. So the spindle needs to be about, it needs to be kind of close to the edge of your half, but not right on it. it needs to be close, apparently about five millimeters. So I'm gonna say there. So I get my knife, and again, same as the um, bearing block, I'm just carving a small notch. Nothing massive, nothing dramatic, it's kind of just to get me started. Okay, indentation is made in the half board, so now I'm going to try, fingers crossed, try and burn it in. So, I need to put that on the ground my foot as close to the where the spindle is going, to, is going to go as possible. You can see today it's so wet and muddy. I'm hoping that won't affect me too much. But I'm just going to try and get any excess mud off my boot if I can. Do right. Okay. So that goes there. I'm just going to put my catching thing under here. I don't know if I need this yet. I don't think I do. But I'm just going to put it down there anyway, just in case position myself correctly. Okay, so I've got my bearing block. So the idea now is spindle goes there, bearing block goes on the top, and I lock my wrist against my leg there so it doesn't move, bear down on this, and bow to burn in the notch. So see if I can remember A how to get this on. So that needs to be that way doesn't it? And then I go around that away and then in. vertical as possible. Okay. Now I'm trying to keep the bow as level as I possibly can. Try and keep it as vertical as possible. No need to go hell for leather straight away and start I'm told as we're just burning in. to smell which I think is a good sign. I'm starting to get some smoke. I don't know if that's from the top or the bottom. So that's actually coming from the top. Is the bottom doing whoa bottom doing anything? Okay bottom's not really doing anything at all so I think I may need to taper this a little bit so I'm just gonna point the end of my spindle again and then we will Go back to it.
Okay. Now, the information that I have says to do this until the entire whole little notchy bit is black, which it is, as is the bit on the end of the spindle. Now, you can see how drastically that has reduced from when it first started, and that's just from burning it in, so I suspect I'm probably doing something wrong, but we're going to try and move on and do uh, the next bit. So the next bit is to carve a notch. Oh, it's so wet. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work because it's soaking here. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, the next bit is to carve a notch out of this particular bit of uh, half board. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that completely and utterly wrong. I'll just show you quickly. This notch here is kind of the size of bigger than my thumb, which is way too big, and I've cut out here way too much of the uh, of the hole that I need to create dust. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and uh, and start again with burning in. <sighs> right, I've carved another notch, which is significantly smaller than the uh, the one I did before. Uh, I, if I was a betting man, I'd say I probably haven't burnt the, uh, the initial notch in enough to, uh, for it to work, but I'm starting to lose light now, um, and we need to have a, have a go. So, if it doesn't work, then you know what, I'll, um, I guess this will become a two-day video, because um, I'll come back out tomorrow and, and try again. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can get anything from this. The spindle's covered in mud. I think we might be getting smoke from the bottom this time as well. So, oh no! <laughs> oh, I dropped it. But did have a significant amount of debris in there but no ember so that's okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pop the leave that dust there it's in there and we'll uh, we'll keep going that has given me a little bit of hope So again, plenty of dust, but no ember. Oh no, it's gone flying. But, but, look at that. God, I hope you can see that. Oh, yes! I'm so happy with that. <sighs> How long did that take me? So I got out here at, excuse me, what, about half ten, something like that, and it's now. Oh, okay. It's two o'clock. 
Oh. So that took a while. Oh, I'm so happy though. All right, so, oh, let's keep all of this stuff off the ground where I can, can clean off that half board. Okay, so, success. We did it, we got an ember. What's really great about these is they actually burn for a really long time provided you got enough dust. And because it took me, what, three, three, maybe four goes um, using the same notch uh, to get the ember, that really helped build up the amount of dust that I've got. So what you would do now is uh, you take a tinder bundle, something uh, like straw works really well, or hay, bunch it all up, uh, and then you very carefully pick up your ember here, pop it into the tinder bundle, and then gently blow it into life. Um, to uh, burst into flames, which you could then get your fire going from that. Um, you know, this is a very kind of traditional way of doing it, fire by friction. Uh, yeah, great stuff. God, I'm exhausted though. That was, that's a lot of bowing, and if you go too hard, too fast, it just, you're done. You just puff out straight away. So proud of myself and if i can't do it in the week wild bushcraft company look watch this video i can do it <laughs> ah. all right guys well we did it success got an ember with a handmade bow drill so i'm really proud of that um i learned quite a lot of lessons today as well uh, particularly when it comes to uh, the spindle. So I think this was my biggest downfall to start with. Um, I think the reason that I lost so much of it is because I didn't actually taper the thicker end enough to start with. Um, when I first put it into the, the hearth to try and burn it in, I, uh, I don't think there was enough of a point. I think it was too flat, which is why it took so long. Um, so I'll need to be wary of that next time uh, and also having to continually repoint this end as well. Uh, I might make my next spindle a bit thinner. I, think, I don't know if that made any uh, had any effect on, on my performance today but yeah next one I might do a little bit thinner. Um, what else? So the hearth oh, which is here uh, it's now covered in mud so I don't know if I'll be able to use that one again. Maybe if I take it in the house and dry it off. Maybe that will work, I'm not sure. Um, but learnt a good lesson with the uh, the notch. I do think that I should have burnt both notches in more. Um, as you can see now, hopefully, on this second notch, you see how much bigger it is now. When I first cut, the, cut this notch, this uh, this notch went right into the centre of that, um, that hole, which as you can clearly see, uh, it doesn't anymore. So it may be actually that if I were to cut that some more, cut into the middle, uh, and carve that out to make a bigger notch, then that hole might still might still work. I don't I don't know, but yeah. So a few lessons learned, um, but I really enjoyed that. It was hard work, um, but it was good fun. So I'm going to end the video here, guys. Thank you very very much for watching. If any of you guys have any tips on bow drills, like woods to use and things like that, um, please let me know. That would be great. Um, I need all the help I can get. Um, as I said, I, I'd managed to get a number this time, but it took a long time. So if you know anything that I can do to speed up the process um that would be amazing thank you very much for watching guys um as always if you're new make sure you hit subscribe if you want to you don't have to um, very very soon take care hit the bell to stay notified of whenever I put out a new video and I shall see you guys